Let's try this. Please don't roast me too hard. This is my first time trying this and I'm using a new media mod on this 11. So we'll see how this goes. But I just wanted to bring some awareness to some upcoming parts for the A90 Supra. I'm a design engineer and these are some products that will be released shortly. I think we're expecting production within the next, I want to say couple weeks. So I figured I'd bring a little bit of a preview for people, kind of give everyone a chance to see and make their own decisions. But just to, I like previewing some products that I've designed. I find it very interesting to see the reactions and stuff. So as we dig in here, we have the Dynan Performance Cold Air Intake. Now this is going to be a plastic injection molded box with a carbon fiber lid, carbon fiber intake tube, and then a bent sheet metal intake, or excuse me, not intake, heat sheet, bent sheet metal heat shield to save the back of the box from the turbo as well as keep your temperatures down. We've also got a down here, I'm not sure if it's visible, but I will bring up some CAD later so people have a better idea of what I'm looking at. There is a factory kind of ram air system. This reincorporates that by using a extruded projection from the box that allows a little bit cleaner and more airflow into the filter itself. You've also got three struts excuse me, three slits along the front of the box here that is a little bit more airflow allowance. And then you've also got this decorative one at the top here. Now this of course isn't really going to be helpful for performance necessarily. It's more of a decorative piece, but it does give you a nice little kind of tidbit preview into the blue filter that's hidden within the box. Now you've got traditional Dine-In egg branding as well as Dine-In embossed lettering underneath. And this is, in this application, this is specifically designed for the B58 engine. However, this same box and lid and everything will work with the B48 on the two liter Supras. However, this tube will be changed for a longer tube that runs directly down into the turbo. However, the box itself is cross compatible between both of them. Now, this also, with the carbon fiber tube, uses factory MAF sensor and will also work with the factory turbo inlet pipe with the sound chamber, or in this situation I have the Dynan Performance uh, inlet tube that also gets rid of that sound chamber, which gives you some excellent induction noises. This is also, when I designed this, this will work with all the factory 21 plus OEM strut braces. This is a 2020, so I didn't have the strut braces, but this will work with them, so it's cross, it's year cross compatible. Now these are just billet aluminum Dynan strut braces. These should be released shortly as well. Now these, of course, obviously work with this. Um, that was the entire purpose of the design. However, for 20, model years this hole is not threaded they did not thread this until 21 plus so for this year specifically you'll run a a bolt through here with a nut on the back side once the car is kind of lifted up in the air it's pretty easy to get to my car's slightly lowered so getting my hand into this gap is kind of a pain in the ass but with a little bit of uh, a jack under there it's not difficult at all we've also got the carbon fiber engine cover just kind of Dresses up the engine bay a little bit, some nice pinstriping, some other just kind of exterior, I guess, decorative pieces that just kind of follow design cues. Overall, I think it ties the engine very nicely together. I love carbon fiber, but I'm also not going to go overboard with it. That's one of my biggest gripes is people just tend to go way, way overboard with it. And for me, that takes a little too far, but anyway. Thank you for watching. I just kind of wanted to give you guys a little bit of a tidbit here. I'm going to throw some cat up on the screen, kind of show you guys the rest of the box that you can't see because it's in the car and just kind of talk through the process a little bit. So I figured it might just be worth kind of going over, showing some design process of what it takes to design the intake and then just kind of show what files I'm working off of so that people can kind of understand where the design element comes in. So this is basically just three-dimensional scan data of the intake area where the factory intake is for the Supra. So normally the intake would be sitting in here. You've got 
the wastegate down here, and then this specifically. Sorry, I don't have my space my space mouse, so it's a little difficult for me to move this as easily as I would normally. You've got this down here, which is where the factory kind of ram air system is. So basically, when designing this, I start with this, and then I start with kind of just a, I guess a rough kind of top-down view. Excuse me, let me get myself situated here. Uh, so that when looking at it, you kind of, you realize how much space you have, you realize that this is the, right here, this is the turbo inlet hose, so clearly your elbow is going to have to mate up to this without exceeding the depth of it, or otherwise you're going to end up hitting. You know, there's a bunch of different issues that you potentially run into. This is also, you know, you're limited by how much space you have in the fender. You know, there's a lot of different factors that come into that. So this is kind of the scan data that I was working off of when designing that intake. Now, the, excuse me, let me pull up some of these other ones. So what ends up happening is as the design process goes along, you eventually end up with things along the lines of this, which just kind of, this is just a snapshot of a previous design. You'll see a floating MAF sensor here. This is just because the tube's suppressed and you can't see it. But as you see here, you know, you, you put the intake in and you kind of line it up. These were the cutouts that I was talking about. So I'm sorry to correct myself in retrospect. There's not three. I believe there's four here and then there's four on the, uh, matching face but um, this kind of gives you an idea of like what the process is when it comes to designing and so once you get the kind of box shape down then it turns into um, the tube this was probably the most complicated part because this piece comes out of here out of this inlet or outlet excuse me and then makes a very sharp and direct not quite 90 but damn close turn and then spins and then comes down and you have to maintain the same radius in this area with the MAF in order to avoid throwing any kind of check engine lights or anything like that. It tends to just complicate the design feature and obviously nobody wants to deal with redesigning the same thing over and over and over again to deal with the MAF. So here you can see that this is one of the tubes. I don't believe this is the current one. These are some older designs. But you can see this is the center line for the tube, which is roughly the center line where the air would flow through. So you try to keep the MAF sensor dead center there. This way you can kind of avoid any kind of weird readings coming from the MAF. As I said, these are some older ones. So you'll see here, you see how the tube connects to the outside portion of the box and then there's a pretty abrupt downwards and leftwards turn and it has to line up with, you line up with the factory inlet. Now the portion of this that makes it a little more complicated is the fact that you need enough space here that any kind of vibration through the car does not cause these two to connect or you're just gonna end up with noise and you know vibrations and things wearing away at this and just it's not pleasant and no one wants to deal with it and you're trying to avoid you know these are rubber bushings this will move somewhat so the avoiding of contact between these two surfaces here is ideal in all situations you also want to leave some space here so that when you put a silicone coupler on here there's enough room that this can move and you're still getting a good seal on the uh, between the two tubes <clears throat> so I just thought I'd give a little bit of background kind of show how the whole thought process went in. Feel free to ask any questions and I'll answer them as best as I can and within the full scope of what I'm allowed to technically say. Thanks. Yeah. Bye-bye. So just to wrap this up, I actually will be selling my A90 and I'm gonna be picking up a GR Corolla. So I do have some projects in the pipeline for things that I'm designing for the community. Um, I will be posting a video about those coming up. Some of them are already most of the way designed. Some of them I have 3D printed samples. And from there I'll have a better idea. Hopefully the car will be in within the next week and then I can start test fitting things. That'll make my life significantly easier, make sure all my mounting locations are correct and all that kinds of stuff. So, you know, if you're looking for something interesting, I will be posting some uploads about that. But anyway, have a great night. Uh, bye.